We do have a very, very, very special guest in the studio. So we will take a pause from looking at the chess. And we have Grandmaster Jan Napomshi, who may be better known now as the challenger to the next world championship. How do you feel? The traditional answer, I don't know, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, you keep saying, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, next game, next game. Now you don't have to worry about the next game. No, I surely have to because, uh, <laughs> no, but like last year in Yekaterinburg, it was quite, I mean, quite disappointing, yeah, to lose like this to Ding and uh, uh, somehow I like, I didn't have like some real celebration, yeah, so I was like so, so happy after holding this game against Maxim, but it, I mean, holding in the winning position probably at some point we white. Holding a draw, yeah, and seeing like Grishuk is doing so good against Tanish. <laughs> but then uh, I just immediately started preparing for the next game and I mean, got surprised in the opening and lost and was like very, very sad. And uh, yeah, tomorrow I'll try hard not to let this, you know, repeat. So I assume you won't allow yourself a full scale celebration until the tournament's over. Yeah, I think this would be like uh, more or less professional. Well, it seems like throughout the tournament, you've been trying to contain your emotions in a box. Mm -hmm. What was that first feeling after you made the draw? Well, uh, I was so happy, like, okay, all these pieces went off went off from the board, yeah, like, especially queens, like, then rooks, then pawns, then, okay, if I saw this fortress, yeah, rook h4, rook, I don't know, rook h4, rook f4, bishop c2, bishop d1, so it shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but, yeah, somehow I felt like, if, if there would be a chance, it would be, you know, let's say the final game of a tournament, uh, I, I wouldn't be, you know, uh, I, I, I wouldn't resist, yeah, but uh, uh, I guess, yeah, overall, of course, I'm very exhausted. After Richard played, played the Rouser, was that something that was on your preparation radar? And when he played it, uh, what, was your, what was your reaction to his opening choice? Well, uh, my reaction was pity it's not Berlin. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I had I had an idea or two there, yeah, in Berlin. I mean, uh, somehow this temporary peace sacrifice, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. may, may, maybe you're familiar with novelty. I, I from watched the previous recap. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I had quite something in the pocket. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but to speak more more you know, more seriously, uh, I think he plays. I would say like five or six different lines, and I think he plays three different lines even inside the. Sicilian, so he plays these two knights and d6. Uh, he plays Rouser and uh, he plays also, I don't know, some kind of Paulson and Taimanov. And uh, I mean, okay, I could expect everything, so of course I had like, I had to repeat more or less, okay, all these lines. And maybe Rouser is, uh, I mean, somehow against uh, Taimanov, you know, take on c6 and play queen d3 and get the same game. Yes, so you're very happy. And uh, against Rouser, uh, the position is overall quite good for White, but it's never, uh, yeah, it's never a draw. Yes, yeah? so it was one of the one of the lines we expected, and of course, uh, I think the, it, it was maybe only only line in Sicilian he didn't play yet in this tournament. Yes, yeah? so it, it was, I mean, surely it was expected, but uh, okay, I knew this F3 line is very solid, and uh, I mean, I had, this, I think I, I had a couple of games uh, like this already. Yeah, okay, maybe don't, may, 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 maybe also in Blitz, but uh, yeah. I, of course, like, if you want to win badly with white, you go for f4 every time, yeah, against Rouser, but okay, f3 is, like, a very solid line. So this was, like, uh, somehow my prep. I mean, uh, I think uh, white, like, has very nice plans, like, 92, 94 sometimes, yeah, like, king b1. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, somehow this bishop d7 line is tricky, but... Uh, if white wants to, you know, to be solid in the center, then the knight is solid. Yes, it's somehow you don't allow some big madness on the board. Uh, so I wasn't quite sure what should I do after bishop b4, if we bishop a5, uh, by the way. But uh, I felt that somehow it should be good because, I mean, okay, like bishop takes c3 is clearly, um, I mean, I shouldn't worry about this too much. Okay, like two bishops. I, I mean, of course, I wanted like... Uh, you know, another day I would probably maybe try g4, g5, yeah, because it's somehow very, very obvious ideas. But, I mean, okay, he has like rook c8, bishop a4, so uh, I'm not sure it's... I mean, even after castle, I'm not so sure it's so good. It, after e5, knight d7, also I close the center, so my bishops don't work anymore, so he goes bishop b5 or bishop b4 again. Well, so then I saw, okay, I can like bishop b5, bishop f6, takes, takes, takes. As one streamer says, yes, takes, 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 yeah, takes, 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 and then, okay, and then takes, takes, and okay, then it's good. Yeah, no, and at this point it seemed like you know everything was, uh, you know, solid from your perspective. And we actually caught the moment when you went to do an interview with Dina, and everybody who was watching live applauded you and congratulated you. So I mean, 
how grateful for are you for the fans that come out each and every day wanting your autograph, wanting photos, and celebrating you? Uh, very much. I, I, I believe, like comparing, for example, to the previous candidates, which was in more strict COVID times, uh, there were like no audience at all. There was no no, no audience. Uh, understandably, and uh, I think the first tournament which with more or less, mm, you know, normal, uh, I don't know, normal, you know, uh, normal way of, uh, I don't know, letting people in, yeah, so it was Bucharest, but in Bucharest I did quite qu quite poorly, so no one applauded to me. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just wonderful feeling. And you stream yourself sometimes, right, mm -hmm. chess is becoming more and more popular, I mean, you know, what has that been like for you? Because you've been playing chess at a high level for such mm -hmm. a long time, but it's very clear that more and more people are showing up or watching and seeing you be the superstar that you are. You mean uh, streaming or what? Well, you have streamed, so that you, just, ah. you know, you, you, many more fans, but right? Are the out last there time I, s I made a stream, it was, I think it was like half a year ago. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, no, uh, of course, uh, during the pandemic times, it was some kind of, uh, you know, you had to, you have to have some schedule not to not, not to go mad, yeah. Just uh, to to have a goal, yeah. Okay, tomorrow tomorrow I will stream, yeah. Tom tomorrow I have a okay, let's say title Tuesday and so on, yeah. And uh, all, all, all these tournaments, but uh, I somehow understood at one moment that it's like it's it's just kind of a work, yeah. It's not like it, if it, if it's a hobby, then okay, then you just waste some time. Uh, basically, so okay, you have some fun, but it's no, nothing born. But for example, I thought it's like completely. I mean. Impossible, so to uh, at least for me, yeah, to mm, uh, do it at the same time streaming, like uh, let's say like Hikaru, yeah, so like every day, and um, you know doing some some serious chess work, yeah. So I'm just I don't have so much energy actually, <laughs> yeah. So I I had to choose uh, because okay, I had sort of experience, yeah, like back then, like I don't know, ten years ago. So I was trying to combine uh, let's say esports and uh, and chess and uh, did quite badly. In, in both, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One more question for me, Jan. Uh, what, you know, having, being as experienced as you are now, having won the candidates twice, what sort of advice would you share to young grandmasters and maybe even someone like Ali Reza Faruja, mm -hmm. who, of course, struggled mightily in this tournament? Who, so I share now this advice, and next year, <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> you know, next time uh, we, 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 we play, question. we play, okay, he hired you a few days ago, I know. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then they beat me. Yeah. No, on, but, but seriously, at some point I thought, okay, what, what's going on? And uh, I thought that maybe, maybe, maybe it's because of okay, I started so well. But in the, at this tournament, I was you know more trying to play chess uh, upon like playing for a win. So maybe that's quite important because, I mean, for example, uh, Dink who like had like this super streak of three wins in a row. And then he said, okay, but I was playing for him in this position and it was very hard to play. And that's why, okay, I mean, it happened. It happened what happened. Uh, but uh, I think it was, you know, somehow the, you know, the difference, yeah? So while, while he was playing, uh, I mean, playing playing chess, yeah? So he was like, worse, maybe not worse, but uh, okay. For example, Fabiano pushed too hard to win against him, yeah? For example, okay, it was E6, E7, it was obvious uh, with such an exposed king, okay? E8 never promotes. So it only, I mean, it can never be worse, but still he insisted and okay, he ended up blundering something in the time trouble because he was extremely tired, okay, all these long games. And uh, also another another somehow was lucky factor that I, I think I never had like six hour game here. Yeah, so it was like more or less every time it was decided uh, after, I mean, even, even before the first time control. Yeah, so it was like the position was uh, already quite, Quite, quite plain, yeah. So it was like some repetition or some. So may, maybe that's the trick, yeah. So I was uh, lucky enough not to play for a win here. Yeah. So I just played some normal. I mean, okay, normal openings, uh, some u usual openings. So I, I never was forced like to push too hard. Okay, o obviously this, this all became possible because I started so well. Yeah, like um, I mean, beating like the maybe the main, the main favorite of the tournament with uh, with black pieces. Uh, I mean, d d despite the, uh, I don't know, despite the jet lag, despite he didn't really have time to prepare because okay, he he never knew he would he will play here uh, until the very last moment and so on. I mean, uh, yeah, maybe maybe it was uh, the big mm, uh, I don't know the, the big handicap for me yeah, just to to play normally. So I have a two part question for you. 
-hmm. So can you confirm right here and now that you will play in the 2023 World Chess Championship? Uh, sir, you are organizing it, yeah? Or <laughs> why are you asking, yeah? Well, well I mean, if I'll we be, be given a chance, yeah. Okay, and so second part of that question, who do you want to play in the World Chess Championship? Uh, as I say, literally, I don't care, yeah? But <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, of course, it would be quite uh, challenging to play Magnus again. Yeah, and well, I guess, has that imp do you think that impacted yourself during the tournament? Or did you actually just you literally didn't care and you were just playing for first no matter what? Uh, no, of course I was playing for second, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew, okay, I knew, okay, I should like uh, take an eye, so uh, Firuz and uh, won't do that brilliantly, yeah, so then, okay, then I fight for second place and then I somehow, okay, qualify. Uh, I mean, it's, I think these thoughts could be quite, distra you know, destructive, yeah, so you just start to, I don't know, dividing the cake too early, yeah, so it's, it, sh it shouldn't be like this, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very strict, it's very, you know, it's a very tough tournament and, you know, you, um, basically you make one mistake and everything goes, goes the wrong way, like, I mean, for example, against Hikaru, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how to explain, but I never ex expected E4 from him somehow, mm -hmm. so I just didn't take a look at Petrov, and then he played E4 and I thought, okay, let's maybe deviate from some main lines and then, okay, I mixed up everything and then I was like, out of complete and over position, I was lost in two moves. So that's that's a good example, and everything could uh, could go different way. Yeah? So if you start like thinking, calculating, okay, how many points and so on and so on. I mean, that's probably what you're forced to do when you're like trying to catch up someone. But uh, that's uh, that's also the tough part of the tournament. Yeah. Well, we do have a few questions from the chat. Sure. From many of your supporters, uh, you know, would like to ask. So, Jan, do you think that this tournament showed you at your peak chess? Or is there anything you think you could have done better? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm sure I shouldn't like blame myself for playing here some extremely poor chess, but uh, I can't say I managed to like hold some extremely high level through all the games. It was like uh, some games for like really good. Uh, and but I, I can't say it was like some, some game which I like played without like any inaccuracies from first move to last move, yes. So. Uh, in general, there is always room to improve, uh, but um, I feel like, uh, uh, I mean, maybe comparing to the match, yeah, um, I maybe uh, bit up a lot of, a little bit too much chess knowledge, yeah, uh, more than, uh, as they say, more than I could chew, yeah, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, I mean, it, it, it was really difficult, yeah, so I needed to, I don't know, rebuild my opening repertoire, maybe some, uh, make some correction about my playing style and so on, so it was, uh, Mm, uh, it was quite difficult, and basically, I just had not enough time back then. Mm -hmm. So, and also, I think I had some very poor timing of my preparation. So, it, it never stopped until like maybe like a few days before the match, and uh, somehow I found out that in the end, I didn't have you know any uh, you know uh, any clue why would I play chess? Yeah, okay, I had chess completely. Come on, what's <laughs> what's going on? Like for like four months uh, without any rest. Okay, I was working. And uh, yeah, at some at some point, okay, my brain just uh, refused to work anymore. Well, so. the perfect segue to our next exactly. question <laughs> by Jokicinator: How does winning in chess compare to winning in Dota? Hmm. Okay. Normally, it takes longer. <laughs> 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 yeah, in Dota, yeah, you need just half an hour. Yeah, and <laughs> especially in classical chess, it's, it takes a while. Well, it didn't take too long in some of your games here. And we have just one last one for you here. Bringing that up in a second. So thank you very much, everyone who is uh, <laughs> who is getting involved. And here we go with this again. Richard Report <laughs> on our uh, show. He he did it. So mm -hmm. uh, can, you sure. can you say? But what's uh, what's, what's the, the backstory? What's the trick? What's the, what's the trick? No. So every show there's yeah. uh, something with Danny. <laughs> Where he goes, mis amigos. Mis amigos. Yeah, exactly. See, uh -huh. <laughs> See we got you to say it. There you go. <laughs> okay, but well, I said it, yeah. Well, you know, you're going to be surrounded by friends, your amigos. So, mm -hmm. Jan, congratulations. Thanks so much for joining us. And sounds like you may still need to prepare for the uh, 14th and final round. So, we'll let you go. <laughs> I, I, sh I should. I don't want, but I have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is your 2022 FIDE candidate winner, Jan the Pomshi. Thank you to Jan, and we will let you go now. So, Really, congratulations. Thank you.